take a look at this Butterfinger poke cake. Doesn't it look delicious? This is episode five of my series, The Perfect Pokes. If you want to see how I made it, stay tuned. Hi everyone, so good to see all of you. I'm Dolores, the Baking Diva. And for those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. If you like what you see today, hit that little red subscribe till it turns gray, and the little bell above it, until it says all, and that's it. You're a subscriber, and you'll get just one notification the next time I have a video up, and you won't miss it. Well, this is episode five of my series, The Perfect Pokes. That's right, and I think by now, those of you who have been following me know what a poke cake is. It's delicious, moist, nine by 13 cake that you poke holes in, and you pour some yumminess over it, and it has a topping, and it's delicious. And I'm gonna walk you through it today. And for all of my regular subscribers, thanks for coming back. You know, I really do appreciate all of you. Um, I wouldn't have a channel if it wasn't for you. So what are we making today? Well, today we are making a Butterfinger, Butterfinger poke cake. Do you know what Butterfingers are? I have little mini ones here. They are, these are the fun size ones, but they are Butterfingers, and they are basically crispy crunchy peanut buttery candy bars so I'm gonna walk you through this this is one of the easiest recipes you're not gonna find one much easier than this if you like peanut butter you like chocolate you'll like this so we start out with a boxed cake mix now I happen to be having Duncan Hines you can use any brand you want and you need a yellow cake mix and all you're gonna do is you're going to follow the directions on the box as you're making a yellow cake. So we're going to pour our mix in the mixer. You can use a stand mixer or a hand mixer, whichever you have, whichever you prefer. You get this in here. Now, what it tells you on the box is to add one cup of water. Just follow the box directions. One cup of water. <laughs> a cup of vegetable oil, woo! Here we go. And three eggs. So let me move this over here. I already have my three eggs prepared. Now I'm going to raise the bowl and I'm gonna mix this till it's all combined and smooth as per the directions on the cake mix box. But meanwhile, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you're going to prepare a 9 by 13 inch baking pan. I sprayed it with my nonstick spray. So you prepare your pan, preheat your oven, and start mixing your cake batter. And I'll show you what we do next, so don't go away. Okay, that looks pretty well blended to me. And of course, you know, does the diva <laughs> lick the batter? What do you think? Mmm. Mm. Ah. Ah. The best part. Let me put this over here. All right. I happen to have a yellow spatula. It matches the batter and my top. So we're going to put your batter right in the prepared pan. I'm gonna try not to make this video too long because this time of year, I know everyone is busy. Those that have kids are busy with end of school activities, um, camps, I mean, so many things going on. People are outside doing yard work. Many of you are just relaxing in the house because we're having a bit of a little heat wave here. You wanna stay in your air conditioning. So I don't want to make the video too long. Plus, this is a very easy recipe to make. Now, in case I forget to tell you at the end, 
Um, all these poke cakes are kept in the refrigerator. You can keep them in the refrigerator a good three days, maybe even four days. And um, they really get nice and moist and they stay delicious. So what you don't eat, keep in the refrigerator. Just cover it with, um, you know, uh, saran wrap or whatever, plastic wrap, and you'll be all set. And what's great about these poke cakes is you can make them before. So you can make this the day before, um, keep it in your refrigerator overnight, which you really should do anyway, and then it's all ready for you the next day. So let me put this in the oven. You're just gonna follow the time on the box. And I think this box happens to say, let me see, 23 to 28 minutes. So check it at the 23 point. Put your toothpick in it. If it comes out dry, it's done. So don't go away. I'm gonna show you the fun part as soon as we take the cake out of the oven. Be right back. Okay, while your cake is baking, you're gonna take a medium-sized bowl, and in this bowl, you're gonna add seven ounces, that would be basically a half a can of sweetened condensed milk, because they all come in 14 ounce. So we're gonna put half this can in here. Look at that thickness. Make sure I have about half the can in, a little bit more. Let's see. Is that half the can? Looks like it. I think that's about half. And we're gonna put in some caramel ice cream topping. Now you can get that one that squirts out of a bottle. I happen to have found this one because I was in um, Trader Joe's and it's caramel sauce. Now this is 10 ounce and this calls for basically six ounces. So I think if you get that ice cream topping caramel sauce, it may come in, well, 12 ounces, so then you would use half of it. So this is 10 ounces, so I'm gonna use probably, well, a little more than half. <laughs> so you start combining the caramel sauce with the, ooh, with the condensed milk. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Mmm. This is gonna be delicious. That is a little bit more, and that should do it. Yeah. Oh, I think that should do it. Let me see. This is um, 10 ounces, and I need six. So I'm going to guess that that's about right. And I'm going to just mix these two together. It'll be very thick, as you can see. But just mix them both together till they're all combined. And then just let this sit for a minute. And then I'll show you what we do with it when we get that cake out of the oven. See what I mean? Look at that. Ooh, it just turned into sort of like a light looking caramel sauce. Yummy. Okay. So I'm just gonna put this aside until my cake is done and then I'll be back and I'll show you what to do. Um, it's supposed to be very hot here. It was hot yesterday and today. I think it's supposed to be in the 90s tomorrow. Um, we joined the pool, so I'm anxious to get there. Um, I don't know when it will be, maybe Saturday, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm anxious to get over there. We have a lot going on. Um, my grandson, Kyle, who you saw me post the proms videos for, he's graduating on Tuesday night, so we'll be going to that graduation. There's just so much going on this time of year. We have Father's Day coming up this Sunday. Um, a lot between the proms and the graduations, and we had birthdays. So uh, this is a quickie. I'll make it, and we'll have it tomorrow. So let me wait till that cake is done. And I'll show you what we do next. That's the fun part. Poke, poke, poke. Okay. And while the cake is baking, there's just one last thing I have to do. You need Butterfinger candy bars. Now, my store happened to have had the fun size ones. The recipe actually calls for four of the full size Butterfingers chopped. So I put about eight of these little ones in a Ziploc bag. You can take 
whatever you want, a hammer, a spoon, whatever, and you want to chop these up into pieces. Pretty easy to do. I'm using the side of my spoon and it's working perfect. Because these are going to be to sprinkle on the top of the cake. So let me get a few of these done. If we need more, I have a few more. We can use those. Oh boy. Peanut butter lovers out there, beware. You're going to love this. Woohoo! Okay. That's looking pretty good. Chop those up pretty well. Boing, 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 boing. Okay, very easy. So far we made a box cake mix. We stuck it in the oven, right? We put two ingredients in a bowl and mixed them. And now we're chopping up these. And voila, we're almost done. Okay, I took the cake out of the oven after about 24 minutes. Now, you need to poke holes in this cake because it's a poke cake. We gotta poke, poke, poke. But you don't wanna poke the holes in it right straight out of the oven. It'll get messy and it won't work right for you. But you still want to poke the holes in it when it's warm. So I would say give the cake about maybe 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes before you start poking your holes. Now how do you poke your holes? I happen to have a spatula with a wooden handle, but a wooden spoon with a wooden handle works just as well, even better. So we're going to take our handle and we're going to start poking a row of about maybe six holes. So we go one, two, three, four. Well, right now we have five because this is a little wider. And then we're going to start another row. One, two, poke it all the way down. Three, four, five. Let me hold that up. See those holes I'm poking in there? And I'm going to continue to poke these holes. One, two, three, four, five. Till I get the holes poked whoops, in the top of the cake. So here we go, another row. Because by poking these holes in here, when we put our luscious caramel and our condensed milk on top of this, it's going to seep in to those delicious holes and into that warm cake. So when I get all, I'm almost done, all these holes poked in there, get your kids into the kitchen or your grandkids. Let them help you. They'll have fun poke, poke, poking. Here we go. Okay, almost done. I think a couple I had six holes in. It, it really doesn't matter. There we go. One at the end there. Okay. So let me hold this up. See, I have holes poked throughout the cake. Now I'm going to bring on over this bowl that I showed you I mixed earlier with the sweetened condensed milk and the caramel. I'm going to pour it all over the top of this cake because you want to get it to seep in and get into those holes. So this is what we're doing, up and down and around. Oh yeah, this is going to be so yummy and so moist. Now after I get this done, keep going here. You want to cover almost the whole top of your cake. Yeah. After I get this done, I'm going to spread it a little bit on top with my spatula. And I'm going to put this in my refrigerator for about an hour. So it'll chill and then I'll be able to put my topping on it. So this is looking good. Mm -mm -mm. Take my spatula. You just want to try to get it over the top of the cake and in all your holes. So I'm doing that now. I'm going to put this baby in the refrigerator and I'll be back in about an hour to show you how we finish this. So don't go away. I just took the cake out of the refrigerator. I had it in there for about an hour because you want it to cool. Now this is the easy part. You're going to take an eight ounce container of Cool Whip and with your spatula, you're gonna spread it all over the top of this cake. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I know that many of my subscribers don't like it when I don't do a taste testing. And sometimes I don't do a taste testing with the pulp cakes because I like them to be refrigerated overnight. However, 
it's early enough in the day where I'm gonna refrigerate this when I'm done and then I'll take it out later tonight and we'll do a taste testing, okay? But under normal circumstances when I'm not filming and what I think you should do is put your cake in the refrigerator and leave it in there overnight. Cover it with plastic wrap, like I said, and um, it just has all that good milk and caramel and everything seep into the cake and it's, del it's delicious. And as I mentioned earlier, what you don't eat, you must refrigerate. So this cake needs to be refrigerated. You really can probably stretch it and keep it in the refrigerator for about five days if it lasts that long. But it's probably best to eat it within three to four days. So look how easy this is. I'm just spreading this Cool Whip all over the top. This is really an easy one to make. Usually on some of them I make a whip topping and all, but this is just the Cool Whip on the top. Super duper easy. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Now, what do you think we're going to do? Well, it's a Butterfinger Poke Cake, and you're probably saying, Dolores, <laughs> where's the Butterfingers? Well, you saw earlier how I chopped up those Butterfingers. Well, we're going to sprinkle them all over the top of this baby. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, boy. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So, I have them in the baggie here that I crushed them up with, and we're going to sprinkle them all on top of this. Oh, yeah, we have some big pieces. We have some little pieces. Oh, my mouth is watering already. So, there you have it. This is how you make your Butterfinger Poke Cake. So, I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're gonna try it. It doesn't do any good to watch me make these things when you don't make them. I want you to make them and I want you to get back to me and tell me what you thought. Look at that, oh yeah. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. I'm gonna cover it with saran wrap. And after dinner tonight, uh, I have errands to run and things to do. So later tonight, after it's been in the refrigerator a while, I'm gonna come back and I will do a taste testing for you. So I will see you later on. Don't go away. Mm, look at this, oh yeah. Beautiful, oh boy, I love it. Also, I will put the um, recipe in the description box for you like I always do. And don't forget, if you want to see more of this, these poke cakes, you have to subscribe. All right, see you later for a taste testing. Woo! -hoo. Hi everyone, I'm back for our taste testing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, normally I would leave this in the refrigerator overnight, but it's been in there about four or five hours already, and I think we're okay to do our taste testing now. So let me cut a piece of this. It sure looks yummy. Oh yeah. The dog heard. It was my dog barking. She heard me say I'm gonna have a piece of this. Now she wants a piece of it. So let me scoop this first piece out. All righty. Mmm, sure looks yummy. Let me give this a taste. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mmm. Don't you wish you had a piece? Okay, let me give this baby a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. Not too sweet. Mmm. Nice yellow cake. The Butterfingers on the top is where you get that Butterfinger, that peanut butter flavor. Mmm. Very good. Well, if you like Butterfingers, if you like peanut butter, give this a try. But definitely make it the day ahead and leave it in your refrigerator overnight. Because all of that caramel and the um, condensed milk has to seep into the cake. 
and it tastes a lot better. So anyway, thank you all for watching. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss episode six coming up soon. So thank you everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, love you all and I'll see you soon. Toodles!